we're inundated with photography now. Like, I think that there's a, a photography writer who I read a lot, Marvin Heiferman, and he publishes these books about what photography is now. There's billions of images every day, so if you're going to make an image, well, my question to anyone is why are you making that photo? Because there's so many. What are you doing there? And I think that I really think hard about that. I made this work because historically Jewish men have been portrayed as soft, as almost feminine. The soft Jewish man, the sweet Jewish man. So the Jewish guys I grew up with in Pittsburgh were tough as nails, uh, including myself. So if you had something to say about Jews or kikes or all that, we would fight you on the spot or point, you know, my buddies would point guns at them. So my perception of, of Jewish men are tough boys, not soft in any way. So the more research I did in fine art, I realized that Jewish men have been portrayed as feminine. So to create these portraits, I thought was worth it in the history of photography, that we have at least a body of work that says something else. That's not the same soft, sweet poem, you know? Besides like Meyer Lansky, or you know, or the Belsky brothers, but I was just raised in the middle of the project. So I was a white, poor Jewish kid. Mom cleaned houses for a living, ran away from dad. I grew up broke and poor, and I went to school with kids equally poor, but a different color. And so I hated being white because everyone thought I had everything privileged, that everything was laid out for me, and I was in the same economic status as my peers. But they didn't think so because of the way I looked. So a good part of my first half of my life, I rejected my identity completely. Didn't want to be white, didn't want to be Jewish. And if I would go to synagogue, which I did, we had to sit in the back from donated seats because my parents didn't have money. So my experience with coming to my religion was also as off-putting as going to school was. Oh, we don't have a seat for you guys this time. So I'm like, so my experience with God or trying to connect was severed because I felt like, how could God, as they describe it, not let me here, not let me in here? And so this was also an attempt for me to get all these lost Jewish friends of mine who are very Jewish back into around this scene. And I didn't feel comfortable essentially being here alone. So this is sort of smoke signals to my friends and my people. Like, Please come to this opening. This is going to be uncomfortable. There's going to be all these old Jews here, you know? And that was the blessing, was the combination between my estrangement from my religion and my friends, and then all these people who are very religiously devout, who, who are the docents here, who we had, it was a tough time to get this show. The docents told me we should do a show about how Jews eat bacon, or maybe we should support criminals. I didn't know this museum supports criminals, is what they told me. It's like, oh. And I, interestingly, my assistant has, was filming this dialogue in that room. And the way he filmed me was like a little child sitting like this with Susan at the top at the pulpit and all the rest of the Jews around. And I felt like I was back in elementary school and didn't, you know, fit in and I don't know why I'm here and I'm Jewish and I still don't feel a part of, even though I have an exhibition in the Jewish Museum, I still feel like the, the, poor, the poor Jew who's not the affluent Jewish experience in the United States. I know Israel's different. When I went to Israel, I was like, there are gangsters everywhere. Every block, there's a little kid with a gun. So, but I can, I'm only speaking from my experience in the United States, you know, as I always felt not a part of.